Hi, I'm recording this week from Wisconsin, from the Wisconsin Dells, as Carl and I celebrate our anniversary week. The sermon this week is entitled, Setting Our Minds on the Things of the Spirit, and it uses Romans 8 verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, Paul says, things are different. You have been baptized and you are living in the spirit and things are now different. The law of Moses does not condemn those who are connected to God directly through Jesus Christ, the crucified, forgiving one. The law of the spirit of life in Christ, being deeply connected to God, daily abiding, living inside grace, humble, gentle love, now dominates your mindset, your perspective. Reading the letter to the Romans feels an awful lot to me like I'm reading a philosophy book. I have to read and reread, trying to grasp nuanced meanings of certain words which seem to be very important to Paul. In the Common English Bible, the word flesh is replaced with the word selfishness. And, and the key here is that the end or final goal cannot be flesh. Maybe it would help if we read the term flesh as human condition self-oriented perspective of the world around us. It's all about me. Whereas the mind of the Spirit sees body and human existence as the incarnation of God's love, it's a small part of a much bigger picture, a bigger perspective of God's plan. We have to be careful because Paul's thinking is not either or, either or dualistic thinking, that the Spirit is good and the flesh is bad. God created all things so Forcing some things to be seen as good and other things to be seen as bad is not true to the fullness of the Hebrew Christian tradition. We humans, though, like the clarity of dualistic thinking. It's either this or it's that, black and white thinking. Let's search for deeper. God created all things, so forcing some things to be seen as good and other things as bad is probably not true to the fullness of the Hebrew Christian tradition. We humans like the clarity of dualistic thinking. It's either this or it's that. But let's search for deeper. I think Paul is aiming for something more nuanced. Flesh and desires are not all bad. God created us. God created us in the flesh. God created us to be together and to be connected and to experience deep bonds with each other. God became flesh. Likewise, desire is not all bad. We can desire to be closer to one another. We can care for more for each other and desire to walk closer to, with God. The more I read Romans, the more I get out of it. 
Paul invites us to keep growing, to keep loving. Paul knows and appreciates the law, but also knows that the law is not the end in itself. It's not just about rules. It's about those rules encouraging us to be more connected. He reminds us that flesh or selfishness is not the end in itself. There's something bigger. There's more to life than the law. There's more to life than desires, selfish addictions, whether it's our desire for more screen time or more food or sex or shopping or attention. There is more. All these things are just one piece of a much larger puzzle of a fulfilling life. These are, at times, seductive sidetracks. But Paul says, if you belong to something bigger, something more, if you belong to and live inside of Christ, the blueprint of radical incarnation, God's love made real in the flesh, then you are putting things in the right perspective, the right frame of mind. All belong to God. God created everything and everyone. The Common English Bible, Romans 8, verses 1 through 11, Listen to how it's slightly different in this translation. So now there isn't any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what was impossible for the law since it was weak because of selfishness. God condemned sin in the body by sending his own son to deal with sin in the same body as humans who are controlled by sin. He did this so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now, the way we live is based on the Spirit, not based on selfishness. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things, but people whose lives are based on the Spirit think about things that are related to the Spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death. But the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law. Because it can't. People who are self-centered aren't able to please God. But you aren't self-centered. Instead, you are in the Spirit if in fact God's Spirit lives in you. If anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Him. If Christ is in you, the Spirit is your life because of God's righteousness. But the body is dead because of the sin, because of sin. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your human bodies also through His Spirit that lives in you. So the key verse for me this year, as I read this passage, is verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. From the Common English Bible, people whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things, but people whose lives are based on the Spirit, think about things that are related to the Spirit. So how do we live in the Spirit and push back against selfishness? Some of my thoughts. We look out for others, especially those who are poor or hungry or thirsty or oppressed for some reason or another. We offer our power to those who have less power. We lean into forgiveness. We see everything and everyone as created by and loved by God. We stop judging others. We don't count sins in ourselves and others. We listen to and connect to others. We try to be one with God and one with each other. We see ourselves as children of God no better than anyone else. We allow ourselves to be on the never-ending quest of discovering the dream of God for us. 
We see God in nature and in others. We see God in ourselves. And not because we did it right or did well, but be just because. Just because God formed us and we reflect the image of God. We live in the Spirit when we desire to make God's love real for others. We live in the Spirit when we desire to make God's love real for others. How do you live in the Spirit? and push back against selfishness. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and love, allow us to live in the Spirit more fully this week. Let our human condition not control us. Not Let us not be self-absorbed or worried so much about what's in it for me, but see the world from your perspective, that all deserve love that all sin and are in need of grace, that your love changes everything. Help us, Lord, to live in your spirit and push back against our own selfishness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.